Today I'm going to start a new series about Saxon math. We're going to take a look at all of the books from 1st through 5th grade and maybe even the 6th and 7th grade books as well. And I'll talk about how the lessons are set up and what they cover. So today we'll be starting with Saxon Math 1. This is intended for 1st grade. If you are not sure which Saxon math book to start with, there is a placement test that your child can take to help you choose the right book to start with. And I'll put a link in the description box below for the placement tests for Saxon. So let's take a look at Math 1 here. There are several components you will need to use this program. First of all, you will need the teacher's manual. It's very thick, spiral bound. And the reason it is so thick is because the lessons are scripted and it also has all of the answers for the workbooks in here. Next, you will need the two student workbooks. And you will need the meeting book. I don't have the Math 1 meeting book to show you, but here is a Math 2 meeting book. It's a thin little book. So it looks like this accepted screen for Math 1. And you will also need the flash cards. I have mine in um, little bags. And you will need the manipulative kit. The, manipula the manipulative kit is used for um, Saxon Math K1, 2, and 3. So I'll show you some of the things in the kit. So we have a clock, teddy bears, color tiles, geo boards, we have pattern blocks, and linking cubes, and a bunch of other things as well. So in Math 1, some of the concepts that you will cover are writing the numbers, identifying shapes, using graphs, identifying left and right, your addition facts, your subtraction facts, sorting things, telling time to the hour and half hour, counting money like your dimes, pennies, and nickels, basic fractions, tally marks, using a ruler, adding two-digit numbers, adding ten to a number, counting by twos, fives, and tens, identifying geometric solids, odds and even numbers, etc. So there, um, there's no min, uh, multiplication or division covered in Math 1, so it's just going to be covering as far as the facts, addition, and subtraction. So let's take a look at the teacher's manual and see what a lesson would be like. I'm going to take a look at Lesson 24. So this gray box here is... Um, what you will need to prepare for the lesson, the manipulative you will need, or if you need to prepare anything like for this lesson, you need to cut out the following construction paper shapes to use in the lesson. So the first thing you will do with your child will be the meeting. And you will use the meeting book for this section. So the meeting book really is like a glorified calendar. And I did print up this um, this was a sample online of the meeting book for Math 1. So this is what it looks like. So this is September. And what you would do is each day you would write in the date and you would also have a pattern. For each month of the year there's a pattern. So for September we have circle, square, circle, square, circle, square. And they get more complex as the year goes on. And so in June, let me see what we're doing in June, you do hexagon, trapezoid, trapezoid, parallelogram. So also in the meeting book during this time in the lesson you will do your weather graph and it looks like this. So you will just, um, the child will fill in the graph what the weather is like that day, whether it is sunny, cloudy, raining, or snowing. So this is the kind of thing that is in the meeting book that you will do each day that you do um, math one. Also during the meeting, you will ask questions about um, right and left, about the clock. Sometimes there's some counting of coins. 
and there's just counting like by twos, fives, tens, and things like that. So the actual lesson starts here. So this lesson is identifying a rectangle and identifying number of sides and angles of a rectangle, and it is all scripted. And after you've taught the new concept, then there is some um, math fact practice. So you'd use your flashcards here. And also, usually there is a fact worksheet in the workbook. So let's take a look at the workbook. So this is the first workbook. And this is the first worksheet in it. So as you can see, it starts off very simply. And then it gets more advanced as you go. I like these pages because they are very um, simply laid out. And this is very manageable to do one page. Here's an assessment. So this would be um, a lesson in which you would use those pattern blocks and you would fill in the shape with the pattern. Pattern blocks, and here's an example of a fact sheet. When I did this with my son, this was a lot of writing for him to do this whole sheet. So he would usually, um, he did write this one out, but he would usually do them orally with me and I would write them in for him so that it wouldn't be too much for him to do. So this is what they look like. There is a second side to the worksheet, um, but I don't really think the second side is necessary to do unless your child needs extra practice. If you look in the teacher's materials, it does explain that this second side is for homework. So I think that was intended for a classroom. So really one side is needed in my opinion. So I'll show you toward the end of the second workbook so you can see how advanced it gets by the end of the school year. So I have used these books for both of my kids and it's worked really well for both of them. And if you guys have any questions about this program, please leave them in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. And that is all I have for uh, Math 1. And in the next video in the series, we will look at Math 2. So thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.